I no longer see happiness as a prize to be won, but instead as a path to be walked. Rather than picturing a gold medal waiting to be handed to me as I soar across the finish line, I see mountain peaks and valleys, rolling hills and soft plains. I see sun and breeze and snow and rain. I see flourishing and growth as seasons change. I see great days and bad days and days somewhere in between. I see resting and learning and failing and healing. I see really big hard things and I'm hopeful they don't drown me. I see really big good things and small ones too all around me. I used to think I'd be happy when I finally reached some goal and I had this paralyzing fear that I'd make a wrong turn and never quite feel whole. But I am right here in the present, living a life that's full of messes and beauty and wonder and laughter and tears and love, so much love and I am happy I am so happy to be here. How Falling in Love is Like Owning a Dog by Taylor Malley. First of all, it's a big responsibility, especially in a city like Liverpool. So, so think long and hard before deciding on love. On the other hand, love gives you a sense of security. When you're walking down the street late at night and you have a leash on love, ain't no one gonna mess with you because crooks and muggers thinks love is unpredictable. Who knows what love could do in its own defense? On cold winter's night, love is warm. It lies between you and breathes and makes funny noises. Love wakes you up at all hours of the night with its needs. It needs to be fed so it'll grow and stay healthy. Love doesn't like being left alone for long, but come home and love will always be happy to see you. It may, might break a few things accidentally in its passion for life, but can, you can never be mad at love for long. Is love good all the time? No. Love can be bad. Bad love, very bad. <laughs> love makes messes. Love leaves you little surprises here and there. Love needs a lot of cleaning up after. Sometimes you just want to get love fixed. Sometimes you want to roll up a piece of newspaper and swat love on the nose. Not so much as to cause pain, just to let love know, don't you ever do that again. Sometimes love wants to go out for a nice long walk because love loves exercise. It'll just run around, it'll run you around the block and leave you panting and breathless, pull you in different directions at once, or wind itself around and around you until you're all wound up and you cannot move. But love makes you meet new people wherever you go. People have nothing in common but love, stop and talk to each other in the street. Throw things away and love will bring them back again and again and again. But most of all, love needs love, lots of it. And in return, love loves you and never stops. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming to share a very special day for Dan and Claire. It's the day they decided to get married and you've all been invited here to give them your support and your encouragement and also to share some wonderful memories of today with them in the future. The purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through all the joys and the sorrows of life and that love may be fulfilled in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment and everybody here is here to support you through that. So a marriage is a promise that two hearts gladly make, a promise to be tender, to help, to give and to take. A marriage is a promise to be kind and understanding, to be thoughtful and considerate, fair and undemanding. A marriage is a promise to share one life together, a love-filled promise which is meant to be kept lovingly forever. Dan, from this day forward, I promise to share my life with you, to laugh with you, to be proud of you, never take you for granted, always take care of you and be faithful to you. I promise to love you for the rest of my life. So every day you live, remember the promises that you have said to each other today. Share your feelings and be there for each other throughout. I just hope that you're always each other's best friend and greatest love. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan and Claire have said the declarations required by law. 
I hope everyone here joins with me in wishing them the very best of luck in their new married life together. And it is with great delight I can now declare you are husband and wife and you certainly know what to do now. <laughs> myself and uh, Carolyn and John, Dan's parents, we'd like to welcome everybody to the, uh, to the wedding of, of Claire and Dan. I'd just like to say thank you for uh, coming after 18 months of, uh, of problems and so on and so forth. People have come a long way to be with us today. I mean, Dan's family and friends from the Isle of Man. Where are you? Yay! Yeah. Claire's family from Blackpool and Cleve Liz. Uh, Claire and Dan's friends from Liverpool. And Claire's friends from Northumberland. Yay! Uh, we, we first met Dan in 19... Sorry, 2000. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, 2014. Uh, and we knew straight away that Dan was perfect for Claire. And uh, the good thing is that, of course, Claire is actually one-eighth Manx because uh, her great-grandfather was born in Douglas. But obviously, Dan is an eight-eighths Manx, and I think, as probably John knows, a lot of people in, uh, in the Isle of Man support Manchester United, uh, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so, but the thing is, since you met Claire, um, there's, there's actually been a change of heart, so... Yeah. It's my duty, of course, to ask everybody to raise a glass to Dan and Claire. A toast to the bride and groom. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Newton Hall on behalf of me and my wife. I was told to say that as often as possible because you get a cheer and a laugh every time, so that's a good start. So firstly, I'd like to say a big thank you to Dave and Val, um, not only for raising this incredible girl sat next to me, um, but for welcoming me into their home, into their family. Um, you've taken me on holiday, you've cooked me loads of dinners. Um, I've drunk a, a huge amount of beers with Dave as well. So. <laughs> taking me to St James's Park and photoshopped a really good picture of me as well but today wouldn't have been the day that we had without the two of them here and, and all their help and support over the last 12 months so well 18 months now isn't it so you can tell about this a while ago um, I'd also like to say a huge thank you to my mum and dad last night was the first time we'd all been together in 12 months um, and mum had a little cry didn't you she's going again she's off again <laughs> And I wrote this well over a week ago, and I was confident I could put that line in. <laughs> she has had a cry, in fact, so. So, Claire. <laughs> Some of you might know that we met at work. Um, first of all, it was at the Christmas party. Um, and it was actually Claire that first started to drop hints that we might have been more than friends. <laughs> Um, so there was a, initially there was a, a, a trip to the cinema planned and fortunately everybody else dropped out. So <laughs> Claire suggested that we might go together, to which I replied, nah. <laughs> I was watching Breaking Bad at the time and I had two episodes left. Eventually I took the hint and we had our first date to uh, Camp of Furnace in Liverpool. She convinced me to eat, to eat an entire plate of chilies to impress her. And I've been doing as I'm told ever since. <laughs> um, but since then, we've travelled the world together, as Dave said. We've walked, paddled, and pretty much followed our appetites around the world. And pretty much realised that we like all of the same things, which is always nice. I did think that we were going to have a little bit of a rocky patch the other week when she found out something about me that she didn't know before. That I 
prefer to have my sticky toffee pudding with ice cream rather than <laughs> custard. So I know that she doesn't really want me to talk about her very much and that's a, a testament to the person she is. Anyone who... <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I'm very emotional today, okay. <laughs> Um, anyone who knows, I know she'll do anything for her friends, she'll go out of her way for everyone, um, and she puts others, especially her patients, before herself. And now I'm lucky enough to call her my wife. So, before I start crying again, can we raise a toast to Claire?